Hey everybody, Blendmaster here with another tutorial, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to create these cool procedural realistic clouds inside of Blender. And the best part about these clouds are that they're easily customizable, and since we only use an emission shader to create these clouds instead of a volume scatter node, they render out pretty fast at low samples. So let's jump into Blender and get started. So the first thing you want to do is delete both the cube and the lamp, and then we're going to switch over to the Cycles engine. Then with the camera selected, we'll press Alt-G and Alt-R to clear its location and rotation. Then we can press R and X to rotate it along the x-axis. I'm going to rotate it by 90 degrees, and then I'll move it along the y-axis by about negative 10 units. Then from camera view, I'll press Shift-Z to go to rendered view, and you can see that currently everything outside of our camera border is also being rendered. So to fix that, we can just come over here to the render settings and check border, and that'll make sure that only the stuff within our camera's border is being rendered. Now I'll press T to get rid of this toolbar here, and we can open up a new window and switch it to the node editor. And I'll press N to get rid of this property tab as well. And currently in the node editor, we're set to just make materials for objects only, but we want to actually edit the material for our background, so we have to click on this world icon here. You also want to make sure that Use Nodes is selected so we can actually work with the nodes to create this background uh, sky texture. And for our sky texture, I actually want a gradient that goes from the bottom to top, from a lightly saturated blue to a nice dark blue that's very saturated. So first thing we want to do is add in a gradient texture. And I'll press Control T and that'll bring up this mapping node and texture coordinate node. And if you're unable to do that, that's because you don't have the node wrangler add-on enabled. So to do that, just make sure you go to user preferences here and look up node wrangler add-on and just make sure it's enabled. And then after that, you can just save that to your startup file so that it'll always be ready to use. And it, now I'm just going to take this object output from our texture coordinate node and plug it into our vector input there. And I'm also going to add in a color ramp node for the colors of our gradient. And let's just plug that in. And you can immediately see that our gradient's working from left to right instead of bottom to top. So to fix that, we just have to go to this mapping node here and play around with this rotation. So I'm going to change the Y rotation to about 90 degrees. And I want the black to be at the very bottom of our camera view instead of all the way up here. So I need to play around with this X location value as well. I'm going to set that to about 0.5, and that looks pretty good. So now we have our gradient set up the way we want. All we have to do is adjust the colors of it. So I'm going to flip our sliders like that so our white is over here. And with the black slider, I'm going to make a really bright bluish color like that. And I'm going to position it right at 0.35, just so it's closer to our white slider. And then I'll add in another slider and position it around 0.75. And this one I want to make a nice dark bluish color. I'm also going to decrease the value of this so it's even darker. That looks pretty good. Only problem is that the transition between these colors is a little too harsh. So I want to switch this from linear interpolation to B-spline. You can see that sort of smooths it out and makes it look a lot better. So after doing that, uh, these colors look a little bit too saturated, so I'm going to add in a hue saturation node and decrease the saturation to about 0.95. And that makes a small change, but I think it looks a lot better. So now that we're done creating our sky texture, we can start to create our actual clouds. So I'm just going to add in a simple plane, and I'm going to press S to scale it up, and 10, and then press Enter. Then I'll go to side view and orthographic mode, and press R to rotate it by about 10 units. And then I'll just move it along the Z axis so that these two vertices here are almost touching our ground plane. And that looks pretty good. So now I'll go back to our camera view and press Shift Z to go to render mode. And I'm going to switch from our world material here to our object material settings. Let's give it a new material and name it Cloud. And I'm going to get rid of this diffuse shader so we can start just working on the actual cloud texture itself. So the base texture for these clouds is just going to be a simple noise texture. So let's add that in. 
and let's add in a the texture coordinate node as well as the mapping node. I'm going to make sure we switch this from generated to object and then I'm going to add in a color ramp node as well. We can just view this by pressing control shift and left clicking and I'm going to drag in this black value whoops that's too far maybe about 0.5 then drag in this white value to about 0.6 and basically wherever it's white in our image we want it to be our cloud material and wherever it's black we want it to be a transparent material so this texture is sort of acting as if it's a mask for our materials and for our material we're just going to have a simple setup it's going to be a plain emission shader mixed with a transparent shader so let's add those in let's add in a mix shader here and we want to make sure that the transparent shader is plugged in top because anything that's black in our image will be the top socket and anything that's white will be the bottom socket. So let's plug this into our factor and view that. That looks pretty good. I'm just going to make sure that both of these are set to pure white color. And yeah, that looks pretty good. Now what we can do is increase this detail to about 16 to make it look slightly more realistic. And even then this looks pretty fake so what we want to do is add some more distortion to this and some variation to make it look a lot more natural so I'm just going to move this texture coordinate down here and we'll duplicate all three of these nodes actually or no not the color ramp node just the mapping node and the noise texture and we'll take our object output and plug it in here and we're going to use this noise texture to distort our original noise texture and you can see that if we just plug it in like that we're getting a really distorted effect and it's already looking a lot different kinda looks interesting but it's not what we're going for so what I want to do is add in a mix RGB node to plug right in between here and we're gonna mix our original uh, vector coordinates with this noise texture so that way when we play around with this factor, you can adjust how much our noise texture is being distorted by the other texture. And I think I'm going to set this to a factor of 0.2. And I want to increase the scale to about 20 so that the distortion is a lot smaller in size. And that looks pretty good. And if we look at this uh, texture right now, you can see that it's mainly white in the center and sort of goes out to gray towards the edge of the clouds but there's not a lot of variation within the cloud itself so to add that extra variation I'm going to duplicate both the noise texture and the color ramp just take out this uh, vector coordinate plug it into here and let's view this I don't want there to be any actual black and white values I want it to be more of a grayish color so let's set this position about 0.3 and maybe this one at 0.6 or 0.7. And if we just add in a mix RGB node, switch it to multiply with a factor set to 1, and just plug both of these in and take a look, you can see the effect we're getting. We're getting more of that variation in our clouds. And if we press M to mute this, you can see the difference. But right now, these clouds are too big. So I'm going to increase the scale to about 10. And I think that looks a lot better. So now if we take a look at our clouds, you can see that over here towards the horizon, there's a very sharp fall off from the clouds to the horizon. So to fix that, we actually want to use a gradient texture. So let's duplicate this mapping node one last time. Use the object output. Let's add in a gradient texture, plug that in. Let's also duplicate this color ramp node, and we're going to adjust the values like that so it's back to normal. And as you can see, we're having the same problem we did with our background. Our gradient isn't properly rotated, so we're just going to have to adjust this in the mapping node here. And I think for this, we have to actually adjust the Z rotation to 90. And same thing, we want to adjust this well, X location so that the black is lower. I'm going to switch it to about 0.5 maybe. Or I think I'm going to go all the way to 1. Yep. And I'm going to move this black slider up to about 0.25. And then I'm going to move this white slider to about 
We're going to switch the interpolation again to B spline so that the transition is a lot smoother. Then we can just duplicate this multiply node again, make sure our gradient texture is plugged into the bottom, and then make sure this is plugged into the factor of our mix shader. You can see that we're getting that nice easy fall off towards the horizon of our clouds. And this looks pretty good. So that's pretty much it for creating the clouds themselves. If you wanted, you can actually press R and X to rotate this along the x-axis, and you can start to get a different sort of perspective of these clouds. And I think I'm actually going to rotate this by negative 30 degrees, because I think this view looks a lot better. And you can also play around with these location values for the uh, mapping node of the original noise texture so that you can get some variations of the clouds instead of having the same image over and over again. You can play around with the X location, the Y location, Z location also. And you can also play around with these rotation values too to get some interesting clouds. And if you played around with the scale, it would you can get some of these kinds of clouds that look a little bit different. You can get some of those. I think I'm actually going to rotate this along the z-axis by about 180 degrees. I think that looks a lot better. So this looks pretty good, but one thing that makes this look a little off is that we don't really have any clouds in the upper atmosphere, and it looks really empty here. So what we're going to do is press Shift D to duplicate this plane. I'll press G, Z, and type in point 2 so it's slightly above our original plane. I'm just going to hide that for now. And over here in the material settings, I'll press this 2 to create a separate material. I'm going to reset that rotation so that it's back to 0. We just want to play around with this scaling values of these noise textures so that we get some smaller clouds. So I think I'll increase this to about 10. I think I'm going to have to decrease this noise texture to about 5 so distortion isn't as strong. I'll change the factor to about 0.25. And for this noise texture, since our clouds are a lot smaller, we have to uh, make sure that this actual texture is a lot smaller as well. So I'm going to increase the scale to 30. I think that looks a lot better. And one other thing we need to do is that because these clouds are supposed to be higher in the atmosphere, they actually need to be more transparent. So let's duplicate this mix shader, plug in the transparent shader into the bottom, I'm going to change the factor to about 0.75 so that it's very faint. Now if we unhide our original clouds, you can see that just adding those small clouds that are supposed to be higher up, this uh, scene looks a lot better. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it for the clouds. Now all we have to do is render it out. And since our material is very basic, it's just one emission shader with a transparent shader, we don't need a lot of samples. We can actually get away with rendering this out at just one sample and having it look pretty good. And as you can see, these clouds look pretty realistic. What I'm going to do now is jump into the compositor so that we can play around with this and just see what kind of effect we can get. So if we zoom in real quick, you can see that there's a very sharp outline along our clouds, and I really don't like that because it sort of looks fake. So I'm going to add in a blur node, and I'm just going to slightly increase the values to maybe something like 3 by 3 and that helps just make it look a lot more realistic, even though it's very subtle. And I think that looks pretty good. Now I'm just going to add in a RGB curve. And for this contrast line, I'm just going to decrease it so that our entire image is slightly darker. And I think I'm going to add in this cinematic node group, which I created. And if you want to learn how to create this node group, I have a tutorial I made. I'll put a link in the description below. It's pretty simple to make, but it just adds in these bars and sort of alters the photo to create a more cinematic look. And I think that looks pretty good. Except right now the saturation is uh, still a little too strong. So I'm going to actually add in a, let's see, hue saturation value node. Let's plug that in there. I'm going to decrease the saturation about 0.75 so it's not as bright. And sometimes with the cinematic node, 
if values are above one, it sort of has artifacts. So to help get rid of that, what you could do is add in a mix node right before it. Just plug in the same node like that, set the factor to 0.5, and if you check clamp, it'll make sure that none of the values in the image are above one, and you won't get any weird artifacts. Because let's say we did add this, and we didn't have clamp set. Let's do something ridiculous. Okay, that's too much. You can see that with this cinematic uh, node, it looks really bad. But if we had the it set to mix with clamp enabled, and this was set to 0.5, you can see that the max value is set to 1 so that the cinematic node still works. This is too bright. So I'm just going to get rid of this add node for now. And yeah, I think that looks pretty good. So I'm just going to take the output from the cinematic node group, plug it into the composite node. Let's re-render this out real quick. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this tutorial, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new. If you have any suggestions for future tutorials, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.